So a few weeks back, I found out through a home test that I was pregnant. And then on just, you know, the past Friday, I noticed I'm like, I have this very pink light uh, discharge coming out. And it looks, it looks kind of like blood to me. And I'm kind of panicking and I'm telling the people who know the situation already. And they're like, oh, don't worry. It's pink. It's really light. It's nothing to worry about. Lots of women have spotting when they're pregnant in the first trimester. It's not a big deal. And then it would kind of stop and start again. So I was kind of like, okay, maybe they're right. And then it kept going on Saturday, starting and stopping. Sunday, it was starting and stopping. And then on Monday, it just like started and didn't stop. And so... I end up going to the emergency room because by about midday, it's it's not like enough to fill a pad, which is what all the sites tell you to worry about, but it's like, it is getting heavier, the color is getting brighter. And so I go to the emergency room and they like, they check me in, they take all this blood, they blow up my veins every time I go to this emergency room. They take all this blood from me they do all these labs, they shove me in the emergency room ultrasound thing where this woman is taking the equivalent of a fishing pole handle and just cramming it up inside of me and like jerking it around every which way. Like it was, it was so painful. And they don't let my partner go to the ultrasound part with me. I'm in there alone. Again, it's very painful. They bring me back to the room and I'm like, they, they wouldn't let me hear like the heartbeat. They wouldn't let me see the screen. Like they kept the screen hidden. Like, I, I feel like this is bad. I feel like this is bad. And, you know, I have my partner telling me, no, we, we don't know that. Like, don't get in your head about it. It's fine. And, and it really felt to me that even the nurses kept acting like, oh, it's just spotting. Oh, it's just spotting. You know, it's not a big deal. Kind of an attitude. And then they're like, OK, in 30 to 60 minutes, all these results are going to be in and the doctor's going to be in here and tell you everything that you need to know. And again, I was getting this vibe of like, everything's fine. It's just spotting. You know, don't worry. 30 minutes pass, nothing happens. I'm starting to get anxious. My partner's trying to calm me down. We get to the hour mark. Still no word from the doctor. He goes out to the desk and they're like, oh, he's in another room. And then he's going to like look at your stuff and be in with you. And, and they kind of keep telling us this at this point. And I'm just like, this doesn't sound good. This doesn't sound good. Like, why does he keep putting us off? Like, if it's fine, they just come in and tell you you're fine and free up the bed for somebody else, right? And then all of a sudden, we're at about the hour and a half mark of waiting and this other nurse comes in and she's like, oh, the doctor ordered a blood test to find out what blood type you are. And I'm like, you just took like five vials of blood. You couldn't just find out from that. Like, this doesn't make sense to me. She's like, I don't know. I'm just doing what I'm ordered. And I'm like, what? why do we need this to be able to do the results on what's going on with the pregnancy? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, this doesn't sound right. This doesn't make sense to me. I, I don't understand what's going on. What's going on? Why won't he just come in here and talk to us? And and. She even said to me, the nurse drawing blood, and, and she wouldn't even take the blood out of the needle they left in my arm already. She had to put a whole new needle in a whole new vein and blow that one too. But she's like, oh, if it was anything bad, they would have already been in here to talk to you about it. So I'm starting to feel a little bit better. You know, I, I have all these nurses, all these people reassuring me it's just spotting. It's no big deal. You know, I'm going to get sent home and kind of like, ah, you wasted our time, you foolish thing. And so I end up getting up and going to the bathroom, which are not in the individual rooms at this emergency room. You have to go like all the way down the hall to get to the bathroom. And like, there's no blood at all. And I'm like, oh, whew, it's it's like stopped. OK, thank goodness. You know, this nightmare is over. And I go back and lay in the bed again, and still we're waiting and waiting and waiting for the doctor. Nothing, nothing. They keep telling us, oh, he's in the next room. He's going to see you next. And then the nurse would come in and be like, oh, he's he's going to wait for those uh, what blood type you are results to come in before he talks to you. And, and again, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why this is holding everything else up. Why does this matter? Like, we just want it in your chart. We just want it in your chart. I, I think those motherfuckers knew what was going on and they just didn't want to tell me to my face. I, I don't know if this is like a post Roe v. Wade thing or what, but but something is really fishy about the way they were acting. And so I start having this little like coughing fit. I have all of my sinuses like draining down my throat. And so I kind of sit up in the hospital bed and I feel this gush. And honestly, I was like feeling kind of embarrassed because I thought I had like peed myself a little from coughing so hard. And and so I was just like, oh, that, that didn't feel right. And I just, I laid back down and about another 10, 15 minutes later, I, I felt another gush when I wasn't coughing. And I, I was like, oh no. And I just kind of like touched my finger on my pants and it was soaked in blood. And I, I'm just like, I'm panicking. I'm crying. 
I'm getting up to go to the bathroom and because there's not private bathrooms in this hospital, I have to wait for people to get out of the bathroom so I can go in there and just find buckets of blood coming out of me and all of these black clots and, and just uh, it, absolutely horrific moment. And I, I I like clean myself up as best I can. I have to like waddle back to the room. I'm just like crying walking past the, you know, the main desk in there and everything, all these nurses, all these staffers, not one of those motherfuckers looks surprised at me. And I, I get back in the room with my partner and I'm just like, this is done. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Like th this was worthless. We didn't get any information. They, they just like made me sit here and suffer when I could have like, I could have been at home for this. I didn't need to be in here for this. And my partner goes, let me get the nurse and, and just tell her real quick what happened. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm bleeding too much. Like I'm going home. And she goes, well, how much? I'm like, it's like buckets. I, I feel like I just left the prom with Carrie and, and there's clots and like this, this is over. This pregnancy is done. Like, like I'm crying. I'm just like, I want to go home. And then within one minute, that motherfucking doctor finally found his way into the room and he has the nerve to say to me while I'm in pants drenched in blood. Oh, unfortunately, it looks like you're going to have a miscarriage. I'm like, I could have used that information two hours ago. I could have had this happen at home where I could at least be somewhat comfortable. I like, why? Why? And this hospital uses my chart. And when all my stuff got uploaded into it, it was saying from the first blood test, not the blood test, blood test, but all the first tubes that they drew, that there were all of these abnormalities and that they could have told from a lot of that that I was going to have a miscarriage. And instead of coming in and having an honest conversation with me so that I could be at least a little bit emotionally prepared, they all made me think that I was just being paranoid and that everything was going to be fine when they knew damn well looking at that, that I was going to have a miscarriage and they didn't say a word until I popped like a fucking giant water balloon. And it took them no time. Maybe two minutes later, they gave me discharge papers and I left because I'm just sitting there saying like, you know what? I, I don't want to hear this right now. I want to go home. And I didn't know this because I've never had a miscarriage before, but they are actually really physically painful. And I'm just like gushing, you know, you, you think when you go to the bathroom and there's all of this clotting that's coming out, like that's the end of it. No, just randomly by surprise for the next 24 hours or so, I'm just passing these giant clots left and right. It, it looks like gack and it hurts so much. And that son of a bitch doctor never even offered me pain pills or told me to take Advil or anything. And I, I like, I always hear about the emotional end of, of, a miscarriage and how bad that is. And it is, it is, believe me, it is freaking turmoil and a half. But the part of this causing me physical pain did not need to be happening. Like they could have given me something for that and they chose not to. They chose to make me sit there and suffer in the state of Ohio, in Circleville, Ohio, and not tell me what was going on with my own pregnancy, not telling me that I was about to have a miscarriage and just t tell me how that's not cruel. Tell me how that is justifiable by any stretch of the imagination. You have devastating news for somebody. And instead of telling them at a point in time where it could be effective and helpful and they can wrap their head around it a little bit, you let them think everything is going fine. And then they just explode. And you knew as soon as you looked at the report that they were going to explode, but you chose to hide out and keep quiet and not talk to that patient until after they exploded. What the fuck is that? That, that... Fuck them. Fuck the whole hospital.